It had been a while since I'd been back in the U.S. Next up, the notorious mugshot. Ruthless muscle of the fiendish five. What he lacked in brains, he definitely made up for in brawn. Turns out he wasn't always that way. He grew up as the run of the litter. <laughs> the neighborhood weakling. The only friends he could turn to were usually found on the big screen. It was there that he spotted his first gangster, and he knew instantly that that's what he wanted to be. He spent the rest of his youth working real hard to get there, fueled on his dreams of great power and respect. With enough perspiration, he realized that dream. He'd become a hard-boiled, street-brawling, tough-as-nails gangster, ensuring that he'd never be kicked on or pushed around again. So he's holed up in Mesa City, huh? I've always wanted to go to that thriving American boom town. Sly Cooper in! Sunset! Snake Eyes! Hello and welcome back to more Let's Play Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. I am the Max Few Trades, and in the last part we've diminished the Fiendish Five into the Fiendish Four. And in this part, we've arrived into Mesa City, Utah to teach Mugshot a thing or two and get our pages back that he's so wrongfully stolen from us. As is always, gotta get all the Mickey Oddles that we have got spread throughout the level, but yeah, you know what? I am okay with that. I don't know why. I've always liked mindless collecting of things. Anyway, what's up, Bentley? Hey, Sly. I thought you said Mesa City was going to be loud and busy. This looks more like a ghost town. Something's happened. Where is everyone? I don't know, but it's starting to give me the creeps. What do you say we take off? And miss all the fun? Besides, I want to try out that new move I got from Raleigh's section of the Thievius Raccoonus. You mean the Ninja Spire Jump? Yeah. Do me a favor and read me the instructions again. To land us safely upon diminutive points, Liebeth lively and presseth the triggering device with the round geometrical object emblazoned upon it. So jump and hit the circle button to land on narrow spots. That's a rough translation. Yeah, apparently, even in ancient Japan, people were jumping and hitting the circle button to accomplish all that they ever needed to do. I will demonstrate that as soon as possible, but we have more bottles down here to collect. Bust all the saves, and we've got new henchmen, finally. Not drastically different, mind you, but they're essentially the exact same things... The exact same henchmen that Raleigh had, except they're dogs instead of walruses, but... You know what? I'm good with that. Any difference is good. On the subject of Mugshot, and, uh... When I was re watching his backstory and the like, and I, uh, I gotta say, I, I emphasize, I, I, I understand and died. I just died. Okay, that's unfortunate. Either way, I sympathize with Mugshot and pretty much any other supervillain that ever became a supervillain based solely on the fact that people wouldn't stop mocking him. I think the only reason I'm not a supervillain is because I'm far too lazy to ever even consider it. That and my freakishly high moral standards. I've, I've never really been able to understand that, but I am completely incapable of doing any wrong whatsoever to anyone, at least consciously. I'm gonna tell you a story here. And, it's, and I'm, I'm playing a game, but I'm just telling you this story because I was walking to school one day. I was walking, it's like probably like my freshman year in high school. I was walking through and I found a snail on the road, on, on the path to the front door of the school. And I knew that that snail was going to get stepped on. Not not accidentally. Someone was going to intentionally see that snail and crush it. I tried to walk away like it wasn't anything. But then my conscience got the better of me and knew that I should do something. So I actually picked, went back, picked up, relocated the snail, and made sure that it was safe. All because I felt bad. That is how ridiculous my... That's how, that's how ridiculously high my moral compass is. I can do no wrong to anyone. And that's kind of been a, both a blessing and a curse. I'm also completely incapable of lying. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I refuse to lie. What's with those flashing lights? The latest in high-tech security. Electronic floor sensors. Step on them and you're a godder. Nice touch. They're safe to walk on while flashing. But it also means they're about to switch to a different sector. I have to ask, why does the brainless muscle of the Fiendish Four 
uh, you know, why, why, why does he have the more advanced security system than their chief mechanic? That's never made much sense to me. I mean, the levels are, I mean, I, I get why. I mean, obviously the levels are supposed to get harder the further you go into the game. That makes perfect sense. But, I mean, if that were the case, why is Mugshot, like, why, why isn't he the first boss then? That, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I also find it fascinating that this is apparently located in Utah. I've never been to Utah, but does Utah look anything like this? I really, I really, I'd like to know. I'm not very worldly. Is it, is it all balancing boulders and far off canyons and orange skies? Because, I don't know, this reminds me more of maybe, I don't know, Texas or Nevada or something. And hang on, I do believe there is a very evilly hidden, yep, okay. You, it's very, very easy to miss this bottle over here. Make sure to grab that. Yeah, Most unfair, I have to say. Anyway, oh, and more dogs. Okay. Do not like dogs. Do not like dogs. Just because I sympathize... Just because I sympathize with the with Mugshot doesn't mean I care much for his species. But that's just me. And now I will risk my life in order to attempt to be able to get another hit. Seems like a redundant cause, but it isn't. It honestly isn't, and let's see. Oh, more guys. Okay, kill them. Uh, it's kind of left ambiguous. I don't really think I'm killing them, but they're also not really incapacitated either. They're, they're just sort of vanishing into the ether. I find that fascinating. What is actually happening to them? Am I legitimately killing them? Or are they just sort of getting hit and disappearing and that's just that way of the game's... Bleh. And that's just the game's way of saying, yeah, they're gone. We don't want to just leave their body parts, you know. Well, their bodies just hanging there and they're going to take up too much RAM or something. I don't know if consoles use RAM. In fact, I'm not even entirely sure I know what RAM is. Kind of weird. Anyway, more guy up here. More freaking play card throwing dogs. That's just weird. Smash up all the stuff. And this seems unfortunate. It appears I have missed four clue bottles. Alright, awesome. Alright, well, I'll just retrace my steps and show you where they are when I find them. Just a moment. Aha! Right next to the grinder, or crusher thingy. Right here. Now there's, uh, well, there's three of them, but I'm still missing one. Well, that does not bode well for me. Alright. Another cut to. Oh, here it is. Huh. Right towards, it's more so towards the beginning of the level where I was bouncing off all of that, uh, that, that sunken cargo down there. There is a bottle precariously perched upon this pole. Is that alliteration? I think that's alliteration. Who knows? Either way, might as well just keep talking through this as on our way to the safe. For this particular level, who knows what we'll end up getting. I th I think I know what it is, but honestly, I can't remember. My memory is shot to pieces. Anyway, we'll very casually just roll our way there, as all master thieves are known to do. There is, ah, this Oh, that's like a cable or something. I don't know. It's a telephone cable. The safe is hidden over here for some reason. Not sure why you put this here. A little bit of higher mathematics and voila! Dial in 314. I've always read voila as viola. Don't know why. Just how I've done things. Alright. Now what is in this safe? I must know. Something awesome, I hope. Outstanding! You've uncovered Rob McCooper's patented explosive hat technique. Use the triangle button to toss your cap. Then use the triangle button again to detonate it. Better back off to a safe distance first. Okay, so you hear the words exploding hat technique, and the action command for it is mine. But believe me, this is phenomenally underwhelming. I remember being so disappointed by this maneuver. Okay, first of all, the range. Okay, this is as far as you're going to throw it. Slightly ahead of you, which is ridiculously stupid, because if you're that close, you might as well just hit them with your cane. Also, here's the blast radius. It's just a puff of smoke. It doesn't even look neat. I mean, it's one thing if a move is useless, but it can at least look really cool. Eh, whatever. So, needless to say, that's another technique of Sly's ancestors that I sincerely doubt we're ever actually going to end up using. 
Although I do have to wonder what circumstances led to one of Sly's ancestors inventing the ability to make his hat explode. And why he needed that. I'm sure at the time it was a, it was a brilliant idea and maneuver that allowed him to make one of the biggest heists of his entire life, but as it stands, I just have to ask why. Alright, and that's the first key of uh, Mesa City, Utah. Alright, let's see what Mugshot's turf is all about. Perhaps it's more impressive than Raleigh's. I would hope so. Oh, and we are in a metal grate. That's a little odd, but okay. Oh, hello. Alright. What do we got? This mugshot certainly isn't shy. Okay, so we know he's here somewhere, but how are we supposed to find him? Mesa City is a big place! Given that he's a bulldog, it seems only reasonable to assume that he chooses to live in a giant fire hydrant. What? That's some sound logic, Sly. Now you just need to find a way to break into the building's base. Oh, I'm sure I'll think of something. How is that sound logic? It's like, well, his species is a dog, so obviously he'd like to live inside a giant toilet. Because that's what fire hydrants are to dogs, or toilets, so... That makes no sense. It's like... Oh. What was that? It sounded like an intercom was about to start, but I think the cutscene interrupted it, and we won't be able to hear it. Uh, oopsie. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is, it's like, oh, well, Sly's a raccoon. Obviously, he lives in a garbage can, or... You know, Bentley is a turtle. Uh... Okay, clearly. Okay, I don't know. I don't really know where to go with that. But the point is, that's a very odd leap of logic, and the fact that they stated it as being sound is interesting to me. Anyway, is this guy throwing around this stupid thing? I don't know. Ball and chain. Is that what it's called? Is it just called a ball and chain, or is it something else? I don't know. Either way, it's time for something special. That's the dog track. Why is this particular mission special? Well, you're about to find out. Murray, what's going on down there? Well, I drove to this hot dog stand for a quick snack, and the next thing you know, I'm getting challenged to a race by these gangster dogs. Is there a key in it for the winner? Yeah, three times around the track for a key. It's all you, man. Drive the van with the left analog stick, and if you manage to pick up any nitro power-ups, you can get a boost by pressing the square button. Go get them. I'm on it. That's right, you heard it here. Murray is actually doing something in this game. I know, shock and awe. This is so f amazing to me, too. I cannot comprehend this. That's always been one of the downsides to uh, Sly 1, that the sequels did way better. Basically, I mean... Okay, so they're, they're basic, you know, the whole Cooper gang, they're a team, right? And I just fell over. That's kind of pathetic. Okay, hopefully I'll still be able to do this. I mean, the, okay. What I was getting at before I was interrupted by my own incompetence. The Cooper Gang, they're a team. Well, it doesn't really seem like it. I mean, in this game, Sly does everything, Bentley points out the obvious, and Murray drives a car. I don't know, it just seemed kind of, Bentley and Murray just seemed kind of superfluous or unneeded. Yeah, I need to stop using big words just to sound smart, I, if I, especially if I don't know how to pronounce them. That way. Future games manage to utilize these characters much better, and I, and I look forward to playing this. But we're not here to play those games, as I've said before, and I need to stop bringing up. We are here to play Sly 1. Flaws and all, it is still a very good game. Hence why I'm bothering playing it. If it wasn't a good game, why would I be playing it? I'm not one of those guys that plays bad games just for the hell of it. That's That ain't how I roll. I can find enjoyment in bad things. I'll watch terrible movies to the sake, for the sake of, you know, laughing at them and stuff, but... Other than that, I just drove over that guy. That was kind of funny. Didn't go around. Up, oh, and that guy stole my nitro boost. That ain't cool. You're a gangster, not a ch cheetah. Uh, that's just that's just low. Stealing from a hippo. Ah, frick, the van keeps falling over. Murray, you're a terrible driver. And by Murray, I mean me. And by driver, I mean video game player. Ah, and there's just this one guy. Ah. Crud, crud, crud. I, I thought this was the second lap. This isn't good. Not good, not good, not good. I'm gonna lose. I am didn't. I have lost. Go me. Those crummy dogs are bumping me right and left. Get back in there and bang them back. We need that key. 
Okay, trying again. Ooh, put all... That's a, like the millionth time I've fallen over in this van. Oh my... Vans are not meant to race things. I mean, I'm sure there's some sort of, you know, group out there, some sort of crazy club or something that races stock vans, but... That's still not something that they should be doing. And now I am backwards. I am completely backwards. Ugh. I am a hippo in a van. Your argument is invalid. That guy went under me! That's just rude. Whoa! Whoa! I practically did a cartwheel in the air. That was cool! Totally going to pretend that that wasn't completely intentional. Alright, we are on attempt number four here. And so far things are looking pretty good, but the guy behind me is not letting up. Hopefully, okay. I think I got this this time. And hopefully I didn't just jinx it by opening my mouth, apparently. Because I know that's how it works. Things go well, but then you start talking and everything goes to hell. Nope, okay, I, I definitely got it. Alright. Awesome. Ah, get out of here. Took me four tries, but I totally did it. Now it's time for Murray's silly little walk. <laughs> I like Murray. The whole Sly Gang is just so likable. All, all three of them are really just fantastic characters, despite the fact that they're not fully utilized in this game, as I stated before, but they're still wonderful characters and I love them immensely. That's all I wanted to say. Alright, so that's where this video ends off in the next part. I beat that guy over the head, no. Well, I'll be beating other people over the head, though. In the next part, we'll be getting the next two treasure keys and breaking into Mugshot's Casino and see what's what. I will see you guys then! Oh my goodness.